Hello everyone, welcome to Telling Tales. I am Matt, your Game Master, and tonight is Wednesday. You know what that means, it's Simbroom. Simbroom, the wonderful dark fantasy game from Free League, which we've been playing over a year now. Devastating stuff. Uh, we are now well into the Throne of Thorns, and by well into, I mean maybe about a third or a quarter of the way through the first story in uh, a number of stories, so um, barely scratch the surface, really. Yeah, as usual, the first thing we're going to do on one of our streams is to introduce our stream manager, um, lest you become horribly alarmed when he randomly pops up on screen. Hi, John. How are you doing? Hi, Matt. I'm doing oh, good. I'm doing slightly good? losing feeling in my toes, but other than that... Is that because you have a cat on you? I think that yes. might be the case. Yes. And not because of any, as <laughs> far as I know, because of any, any kind spinal of damage. Problem. Yeah, that's um, that, the cat is better. Cat is better. Um, yeah, John um, does lots of work behind the scenes, moving around art and cameras and moderating chat and stuff like that. So don't be alarmed if John pops up. It just means something's gone horribly wrong. Lovely. Um, all right, let's get the promo out of the way. There's a bunch of links down below, links to YouTube, links to Twitch. Um, if you're watching on one of those, please check out the other. Links to our social media, our Discord, our Patreon. Those all do what those things do. Go check them out if they pique your interest at all. We run three streams a week. Um, we run Call of Cthulhu on Mondays, Blades in the Dark on Tuesdays, and Simbaroom on Wednesdays. All of them start at 8 o'clock p.m. BST, which translates to 3 o'clock p.m. EST, if that's your thing, and many other time zone equivalents, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Although, I should point out, actually, because this is a, our last stream before then, that this coming Monday's at Call of Cthulhu is off. Off! Not forever, just for a week. Um, they are taking a wee break, and then they will return the week after. Um, we also run monthly one-shot streams, usually, but not always, on the first Saturday of every month. Uh, the most recent of which was Dungeon World, which Pierre ran, and uh, the VOD for that is available over on our YouTube. I'm telling an absolute lie. It's not because I haven't processed it yet. It will soon be available over on our YouTube, and all the VODs for the previous one-shots are available on our YouTube, so go check them out. There's One Ring, and Troika, and Alien, and all sorts of other stuff. All sorts of other good stuff. Um, but we're not here to play Alien or Troika or um, any of those other things tonight. We're here to play Simroom. And let's get on with that. We'll start by bringing on um, our first player, who's actually going to be someone not involved in the recap, uh, because he wasn't here last week. But let's bring on Sam. Uh, Sam plays Askarai, our resident uh, changeling ranger, Rangeling Changer. It's been a while since I did that crap pun. <laughs> Hi, Sam. How are you? Hello. I'm pretty good. It's very excited to be back and see uh, how things are going in Simbroom. Um, I believe you left the, the, the party down a sinkhole, or like you left after the party had gone down a sinkhole. So, yeah. Yeah. When I came back to our Blades in the Dark, we'd lost a goat. So uh, I'm expecting Earthons or somebody to be dead in this. Some just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rip goats. Um, <laughs> It's funny they say Earth. I think it was Askarai um, who uh, <laughs> got uh, got killed. No, no one died. Well, no one who didn't deserve it. Um, so good. yeah, it's all good. Um, now let's kick off the recap by bringing on Stephen. Uh, Stephen plays Elindra, kind of new to the group, former Templar recruit, um, and now Hi. she wanders around hitting things with a sword for money. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Yes, she does. So. Um... In that capacity, um, she joined the rest of the party down in the enormous hole. We were um, under instructions to um, to look around and see what was down there, but only within the area which was um, still kind of touched by sunlight, <clears throat> not to venture into the shadows. Um, and we were a very well-behaved adventuring party, and we didn't venture into the shadows. Um, we uh, we did throw some flaming torches beyond the, uh, the the line of sunlight and and have a discussion about whether or not that meant that we could go there, but decided against it. Yeah, um, <laughs> sem semantics were discussed, but uh, yeah. in the end, sanity prevailed. Yes. Um, so the, we certainly heard some kind of skittering noises of small creatures uh, out in the shadow, but we weren't able to make out much else beyond the circle that we were we were in. Um, what we did find eventually was the ruins of the uh, the tavern um, where we um, had originally met our mysterious <clears throat> quest giver, um, and we found her. Uh, we found her body, 
um, along with a number of items. She had a medallion uh, from her mother that uh, told us that her name was Anna Dea. Uh, we found uh, a bag that she had that had a number of interesting items. There was a, a coin purse, uh, an unusually large pearl, um, some other items and strangeness that we all repeatedly failed to notice. Uh, you did, you did. I, th I think the most important thing in there, perhaps, was uh, she had... Uh, yeah. W well, there was a key, yeah, uh, which I believe is kind of like a plain design, but quite an odd, intricate bit. Um, but uh, the most immediately interesting thing, or the most clue-like object to leap out, um, yes, is a coin. Prios Penny. Prios Penny, which is yes. uh, given to every recruit of the Temple of the Sun, um, presumably including her. Yes. So she realized that uh, we realized that she was one of ours. And I use the term ours very loosely <laughs> as an ex Templar. But, um, but yes, a follower of Prios. Absolutely. And um, having had these revelations, I think yourselves, the, the group, and along with Captain Marvello, who'd gone down with you, um, and the, um, the changeling chap called. Ganderald, Ganderald. Uh, from the Audio Magica decided, again, discretion, the best part of valor. That's you, You've done what you went down there to do, and you retreated back to the surface of Thistlehold to um, to basically we, follow the trail wherever it led. We went for a pint. You went did. for a pint. That's, that yeah. is indeed the first, the first thing that happened. Um, so let's bring along our next player, Chris. Uh, Chris plays Steo former town guard, former infantryman now, and there's a running theme in this for the players, now seller of um, sword lease or spear services for cash uh, and treasure hunter and maybe sometimes a hero. Hi Chris, how you doing? How's it going every friend? Uh, I'm doing okay and I am here to tell you about what happened next. Um, so there's been a running theme so far of, of messages being delivered to us by underpaid goblins and um, we arrived at the pub to one such underpaid goblin with a message that read something along the lines of what you know may kill you. Come and meet us in this very sketchy location uh, as soon as possible. Um, we are, have now an official in-party house rule that as soon as possible when there's pints on the table means after the pints. Um, but once that business was sorted, uh, we went on our way, um, electing to leave the um, the goods stashed in one of the rooms in the, the Witch and Familiar, where we spend most of our time drinking. And um, conveniently leaving Askarai, played by Sam, who wasn't there to, to guard it. Guard them. Um, oh, also, we should point out... No, we haven't discovered that yet. So off we went to this very sketchy location, and... Um, when we came up to the area, we were kind of beckoned over uh, by a mysterious woman um, to come into an alleyway. Um, and we went in and were promptly ambushed by um, cell swords, uh, at least three or four layers beneath our prestige, who we mopped up o over a short combat. I mean, barely cell swords. I ne'er do wells at most, I would say. Yeah. Um, we did extract some information from from the lady who we, we, we did let go i think didn't we we didn't just kill her um no you did let yeah. go you, you're not quite at that stage of, of brutal mercilessness yeah we're, we're um, interrogation hobos interrogation hobos not yet murder hobos um but um we got information from her and i can't remember what it was i need a line matt I believe you found out um, from her that the person who had, you had a description of who had paid her to do this, which matched the description of another woman who'd been looking for you at the Witch and Familiar. Who is quite, uh, apparently quite a generic description and we have not yet managed to... Very generic, down. kind of brown clothes, long fair hair. That's that's basically an unremarkable individual. But uh, one who's trying to kill us. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we declared that a failure. Um and we're about to go for another pint when we realize that we probably should go to the church. Temple. Well, I think you actually did go for the pint and then for a sleep, because I think it was the next day when you went to the, the, the temple. Oh, of course. Yes, yes, wrong. yes. I could yes. be wrong. But, uh, I think it was. And to tell us about the Temple of the Sun and to follow up that clue that Anadea was in some way associated with the Temple of the Sun, um, let's bring on our final player, Mike. Uh, Mike plays Anton, Theog of Prios. Um, 
missionary of the sun god and um, occasional flailer. Uh, hi, Mike. How's it going? Hi, everyone. All good. Uh, so we entered the Sun Church, trying to find out a little bit more about uh, the church's links to Anadea or Anadea's links to the church. Uh, it was kind of busy because uh, a lot of people were looking for guidance from the church due to everything that had gone on in Thistlehold over the last couple of days. Um, uh, but we we uh, sort of briefly spoke to a, a, a priest there. And when we mentioned the name Anadea, we were kind of uh, quickly escorted into the uh upper um, uh, rooms of the church and we were introduced to Father Elfino who um, treated us with a little bit of uh, mild hostility I would say. And yeah, kind of, somewhere between hostility and disdain. Yeah, yeah that's fair uh, and he he basically said that uh, Anadea was part of the church, uh, she was an initiate I think or something like that but then she quit a month ago maybe due to her losing her faith, uh, something like that. He also... I, be I believe his exact words were, she's lost her conviction. Lost her conviction, yeah. Uh, he then kind of inspected some of uh, her belongings that we presented to him, and he warned us that I, uh, one of them, and I think it was maybe the pearl, was filled with corruption or was mm -hmm. a corrupt artifact. Yeah, um, he, he generally warned to be very careful about it. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, like, we uh, we were kind of interrupted by, like, the, the same priest who discorded us to Father Alfino, and uh, he kind of guided us to another room inside the church, uh, right at the top in this copper tower, uh, at the very top of the church, and we were introduced to De Saber the Old, who is the only uh, like the uh, like a living saint? The only living saint there's ever been in the in the Sun Church, um, and yeah, like uh, we don't really know why we were introduced to her, uh, and that's where the session nope. ended. That's basically where it ended. So yeah, let's um, let's talk about about that concept just briefly, so we know what reactions we're about to have. Might put them into context for people. Um, so yeah, the Temple of the Sun has kind of equivalents of saints that are called light bringers, um, and it's all like, with one exception, is a title that's only ever been uh, assigned to people who are already dead, who have given their life um, for Prios in some ways. Usually and typically in the um, the, the, the sorceress wars against the Dark Lords that are um, l long in the past now, but not long enough for a lot of people. Um, Deceiver is the, the one living exception to this. Um, she was granted the title of Lightbringer for saving the life of Queen Corinthia and the first father of the Sun Church back in said war. Um, so quite a long time ago now, and she's managed not to die since then. Um, so that's good. So if you're wondering why people are reacting a certain way, for example, Anton has only just picked himself up off the floor at her, exist uh, at her insistence after dropping there in reverence quite, um, quite suddenly. That would be why. Um, so let's pick up exactly where we left off. And John, can we have an image of Desaber up just to remind us what she looks like? Um, I believe she had escorted you. She has a section of this uh, kind of copper roof dome that she's um, um, sort of separated off with yellow fabrics. Um, and she has dismissed First Father Alfino, which is, you know, odd. Um and uh, has welcomed you behind there and sat you down at a table in a in a fairly friendly fashion. Um, she's introduced herself as Theog and faithful servant of Prios, uh, and probably the others are looking a little alarmed at Anton's reaction. Am I so, here? Am I still guarding stuff? Um, I can't remember what we said, but either way, we're retconning it, so you're here. So. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, Askrai teleports in using that common tune for herself. <laughs> um, I am certain I failed the role to work out. I think who. everyone did except Anton. Yeah. I'd also like to point out that that means that my first rule of the day was a failure. Um, so my elderly uh, deprocs, and I am now on minus one to all roles. Ooh, nasty. Yeah. Steve, I was feeling a bit vague today worth those five experience points probably not um but yeah so I, I still don't really know what's going on so let's find out what anton explains why he's on the floor 
Yeah, let's see if it, do you just get up and sit down, Anton, or do you you know say well, anything I, or do anything? I I think like uh, of of course like when she's instructed me to you know stop with the pleasantries and all of that sort of stuff, uh, I will uh, I, I will of course do that. But then I think I'll also be looking around to see if everyone else realizes who this is and and whether and and how they're reacting to this situation. I think it's safe to say you see quite a lot of blank faces. Okay, uh, I, I will at this point. I will turn to them with complete exasperation and, and say, "This, this is this is Disaber, <laughs> Lightbringer Disaber, Her Holiness." She holds up her hand um, and just kind of with a calming gesture, just says, "Disaber the old." An old woman making her home in this dome of the Sun Church, sitting down for a pleasant talk with some fine patriots of Ambria and Thistlehold. It is a pleasure and an unlikely one, as I have now met two heroes from the Sorcerer's War. Um, she looks at you kind of quizzically. What was his name? <laughs> Isocles. <laughs> Isocles. Uh, we um, assisted um, the pyromancer Isocles in Castor. Isocles. That is a name I have not heard in well over 10 years. But such things are of limited interest to younger folks such as yourselves. She gestures at you all, including Steo, and you think she's probably <laughs> right. Um, she's definitely got a couple of decades on you at least. Um, tell me, children of the sun, tell me your story. What brings you to the temple today? Uh, well, your holiness, we... Um, uh, we we are we are here following the the death of a, an acquaintance that we had recently met, uh, a young woman by the name of Anadea, who we met briefly at the Fern Tavern, and she warned us of something terrible. And before we got to know her more or learned more about what she was warning us of, well, maybe you've heard, but the Fern Tavern was a victim of the sinkhole disaster. And in the sinkhole, we were able to recover some of her belongings. And, well, here is the, the coin that indicates she's a part of or associated with, the, with our great church. She, uh, if, you, if you kind of proffer her the coin in any way, she'll kind of hold her hand up to, you know, she believes yeah. you keep it. Uh, and she nods and says, I... I had had word of some of these matters. Anadea was indeed an initiate here. A good girl, a thoughtful girl, passionate as well. Sometimes too passionate for her own good. She lived here in the temple, in the annex. I happen to know that she left some things behind, perhaps things that you could have access to. And she holds up another hand at this. But first, I must request aid. You would not begrudge helping an old woman in some tasks that shine light on the folk of the town? Anything you ask, Disaber, I'm at your service. She nods and, and seemingly, at first you think like, um, like she seems lost in thought for a second, not kind of unfocused, but kind of thinking about how to phrase things. Uh, and then says, tell me, Father, Father Anton, yes? That's great. Are you familiar with the works of Father Savola? Huh. Yes, 
I have, I, I am familiar with with who he is and and what he does. Um, I would say that Steel and Askarai, you you will definitely be familiar. And you know what, Elindra, give me a cunning roll um, to see if you are um, have caught on to what Father Savola is all about. He's quite a notorious man in this world, but you are newly arrived. That is a that is a, just about a fail. I need that a ten. I got an eleven. Sure. Well, those others of you are aware that uh, Father Salvola is a kind of controversial figure within this world and gaining a bit of a reputation almost uh, Ambria wide um, these days. He is a priest of um, the son who has set up his own organization outside the purview of the Sun Temple, a mission house in Thistlehold where he preaches uh, and gives charity to um certainly sort of near heretical thoughts things like redistribution of wealth and um maybe the sun church should be largely focused on helping the poor and not um ransacking the ruins of davakar things like that um he has a lot of detractors and a lot of followers and i believe in the past and tom has in fact been sent spying is a harsh word um, but certainly to scout out his activities for your um, sometimes superior um, Father Keller. And I think Askarai may have gone on. on, on yeah, on I well. did go with him. Yeah. Um, so, um, seeing recognition on uh, your face and, and hearing it from Anton about Sarvola, um, she nods and says, Father Sarvola has been harassed by some who have a hard time accepting his ideas, his sermons. He has been subjected to disturbances, disgraceful rumours, thrown objects during mass, and not one but two assassination attempts. According to credible sources of mine, there are many who claim out there on the streets that the sinkhole is Prior's way of punishing the residents of Thistlehold for harbouring Salvola. I have been under the sun's grace for long enough to know that this means an attack is almost guaranteed to happen, probably more violent than anything before. Since the first father, and she kind of gestures, the um, kind of hand gesture of Prios, the uh, sun symbol, has proclaimed Sarvola a heretic, the sun temple cannot be seen to be helping him directly. He seems a good man. I would not be averse to doing a little bit of uh, third party bodyguarding. Those who have harassed his mission house so far seem to be ordinary residents, some vagrants, but at times well organized. Perhaps there is someone who guides or commands the actions. What do you care about the safety and well being of a heretic? I think our agreement concerns answers to questions about Anadea, not about me and my motives. Of course. Please, avert this threat. Salvola is a good man. As, as you wish, Your Holiness, um, myself and my companions will, will gladly do this for you. One more question. What, what what was the nature of your discussions with Anadea? She offered us employment, lucrative employment, and the possibility to save a great many lives. She spoke of corruption 
Uh, did she speak of corruption? I can't remember what. what I think she discussion. she definitely, uh, if not directly, then she definitely referred kind of veiled to kind of a darkness within the walls of Thistlehold. Okay. There was uh, there there was some insinuation of corruption. Yes. In truth, we did not have too long to speak with her, but she did fairly accurately predict that she was going to be a target, and it was her. Um, location that was the epicenter of the sinkhole. So corruption within these walls. It would seem that perhaps the threat may have a route external to Thistlehold and further to the north. She nods slowly. Um, in a town like this, the dark is never far away. Its agents are, for better or worse, careful not to be noticed, which means they seldom consciously cause atrocities, but also they are hard to detect and terminate. I have someone I, I think you should meet. She sort of shuffles uh, quite a little slowly and achingly to uh, her feet, uh, walks over to a, a set of drawers, opens them and get out, uh, gets out like a, a set of jangling keys, like, you know, a big, big ring of iron keys, and uh, seems to be kind of slowly making her way towards kind of uh, the limits of where her um, her like sectioned off area arm, perhaps presumably to then to go to the door back down into the Sun Temple. She's sort of like making little beckoning gestures for you all to join her. Uh, we will follow. Uh, as she's um, walking, and generally speaking, you're you are traversing the same route you did with um, with Father Alfano. You know, you're um, leaving this copper dome, going down a set of stairs, along passageways, and so on and so forth, all in this large uh, kind of grayish white stone structure that is the uh, the Temple of the Sun in Thistlehold. Uh, and as you do so, she's kind of talking not particularly seeking responses, although obviously you can give them, um, but kind of um, sort of monologuing to you a little bit um, as you as you walk on. Um, the folk who ally themselves with the powers of the eternal night, that they exist is unavoidable, and maybe also necessary. It shows other Ambrians what happens when the laws of Prios are abandoned. The ambition of the church cannot be to eliminate all heretical behavior. She's kind of looking through her keys as she does so, but must be to guide skeptics to the way of light and to help those who have been led astray. Um, at this point, you are um, reaching um, kind of on that bottom floor and you've, you've gone along a corridor you did not go along before and you've reached um, a large set. In fact, I think I did mention it. There were a large doors with a number of kind of very heavy bars across them. Um, they are standing by them are two Templars who she gives like just a quick flick of the, the hand to and they very swiftly open them up. Um, and you are led downwards by the saber further under the earth into a uh, winding set of white stone, stone stairs lit by torchlight that, um, as I say, winds down into the ground. Um, as she leads you down here, um, the priests work to quickly purge heretical elements that grow strong enough to threaten pious people, but sometimes there are other facilities are required. We are going to, I suppose calling them catacombs is somewhat arrogant given their age, a place where we hold unfortunates in varying states of corruption. Some are beyond salvation and will be transported to the monastery in the Titans, but most of them are involuntary victims that the first Theog and his priests are trying to save. She stops and uh, kind of halfway down these stairs and, and turns and looks up at you all. He who we will visit is 
staying at the top of the three levels of the catacombs. Further down are persons suffering from advanced symptoms of stigmatization. But don't worry, they are caught behind bars blessed by Prayas, and the levels are separated by heavy iron gates. The risk that someone from below could get out is... small. I want to exchange, the, throughout the monologue, I, I want to kind of exchange glances, but not words with Askarai and Alindra, just to try and get, try and gauge reactions, I suppose, from, from this. Um, I would say that Alindra, you are probably fairly aware that the church does this kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> but also... As probably is Anton as well, honestly. It's not particularly controversial. Like, if these people are actually corrupted, then they are a massive danger to others. And more, I mean, still, I'm more interested in kind of the, the earlier monologue and, and the reactions to, to um, Deceba in general from, from Asker and Alindra. And I'll sure. kind of be uh, having a non-vocal dialogue with them where I'll, I'll be looking actually a little bit surprised that something like this could happen at the top of the church. So I think uh, I think Alindra would have um, kind of silently but visibly sort of snorted in derision at the at the monologue uh, about you know bringing people into the fold and kind of helping people and um, and I think at this point is probably actually looking very concerned about going down to this place. Um, so. Yeah, like she's she's not a happy person right now. And how are you, Askarai? Um, I mean, you can't. Yeah, you can't read Askarai's facial expressions because he's wearing Cause he's a mask. mask. <laughs> I don't know. I think we've known enough. Uh, um, uh, we fought enough for me to get your body language. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. I, I mean, emotion. Askarai is not surprised that the church does this. Like. The church do bad things as far as Asker is concerned. He grew up in uh, one of the clans. He he thinks half of the course this like uh, he's kind of pleasantly surprised that she is interested in helping Sarvola at all. But other than that, he's like church just doing church things more or less. And I think everyone's just assuming that Anton's just like, yes, yes, this is all, <laughs> this is all perfectly legit. Yep, so, indeed. I think yep. Anton. I, I'm not so interested in Anton's reactions because he is in the church, so he's not in, in, impartial to the discovery that there is an agent at the top of the church who is kind of pro heretic, or at least pro that one kind of happy clappy heretic that everyone kind of likes. Yeah, I sort of picture that An Anton is like, uh, like upfront kind of hanging on the sabers every word and maybe the the three of us kind of trailing along a little further behind i suppose <laughs> I, th I think yeah. that anton is also like trying to see the bigger picture and i think probably would think that steer would get this as well because it's about keeping the peace like with the salvo the stuff and yeah i think that he he gets that and would assume that steer would be on board with that as well That sounds good to me. Um, so, as I say, you're halfway down these stairs. Um, she kind of has stopped for a second, and, and it registers for you. I mean, it did when she stood up and walked alongside you. She is very small. Um, you know, she's she's very old and, and perhaps was not that big to begin with, but she's kind of dwarfed, especially by the, the larger uh, people among you. Steo and Alindra kind of definitely tower over her somewhat. Um, and uh, she uh, nods and, and turns to, to walk down again. The, the one we are about to meet, he is called Arai. He was nearly dead when he was captured close to the goblin village of Karabadok. The day before the sinkhole, he is yet to provide us with useful information, but maybe he knows something about this. The timing is strong, and it is evident that he has been subjected to strong corruption. Um, she steps down off the, the last of the stairs and you are now on this, on kind of this basement floor. Um, Deceba uh, lights uh, another two lanterns uh, at the bottom and keeps one for herself and, and turns around to offer one to someone else. There's already some light down here, but with the extra two lanterns, there's definitely much more light around you. Um, anyone going to take it? 
I'll grab it. I think I'm, I can be light person. Um, while they're busying themselves with the light, Matt, can I uh, can I fail another witch sight roll? Yeah, sure. Uh, pr- uh, like specifically, um, any any sense of like the area, or are you, are you are you trying to read disable? Disable. Okay, go. So for it. it's uh, it's my vigilant against her discreet. Her discreet, right? i yeah. I will just look what her discreet is. Um, her discreet is just ten, so no no adjustments at all. Okay. And um, for anyone out there interested, because we, we did this uh, last time, we are uh, we have a little homebrew house rule that failed attempts at mystical powers do not elicit corruption. Um, and we are aware that witch sight technically is not a mystical power, but it generates corruption. So we're following the same rule for it. So every time Stephen fails on witch sight, no corruption. Um, and every time you succeed, it's just one, right? I think. Yep, yep. Yeah. I have taken a temporary corruption because I succeeded. Okay. Um, even in the uh, the dark of this uh, catacomb beneath the Temple of the Sun. Um, the uh, the shadow of De Saber is very visible, r- kind of rolling and shimmering around her in waves of um, shimmering golden grey, like a cloth weaved from gold and blackening silver threads. Um, while there is no strict guide to what uh, these things mean, um, it's it, it, it is... Very, you, you do not think this woman has much corruption on her at all. She looks kind of like a light bringer, basically. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like what? What does a saint's aura look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Touched with maybe a hint of kind of like just the the burnishing of her age and kind of the diminishing of her, of 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 the kind of the gold woven around her. Okay. Um. She doesn't seem to pick up on you doing it, um, as most people wouldn't, because um, you're not there kind of peering, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Steo has taken the um, the other torch. Uh, she turns around and starts leading you uh, down around into an arch tunnel with paved floors. After about ten paces, the tunnel opens into a dimly lit hall. Uh, it is a hall with a number of what appear to be cells um, strung along it, um, just kind of not... Not kind of dungeon cells with bars, more like a jail with you know kind of bars with 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 barred doors. Um, from a short way down the hall, uh, in some cell, you can hear a hysterical giggling, and from another, uh, falsely tuned singing, and, and yet another the sim the sound of someone moving around, perhaps in full plate armor. Uh, Deceiver walks straight to the door directly to the left and raises her lantern. A middle-aged man is sitting cross-legged on the floor of the cell, squinting towards the light and hissing between clenched teeth. He wears a white chemise covered in yellow stains, um, probably from the pus leaking from wounds underneath, some of which can be seen on his uh, bare hands and feet. Uh, De Saber inclines her head on the lantern and says, Good evening, Master Orai. How are we feeling today? Without uh, a moment of warning, Arai leaps to his feet, and throws himself at the bars, and furiously reaches through them for Deceiver, who is w- well out of his reach, and um, howls, I am well now, healthy as a bell, let me out! What are our reactions to this? He 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 does this in Ambrian, yeah, and with an Ambrian accent as yes, he into the my, uh, yeah yeah oh yeah definitely he's definitely got uh, yeah I kind of grab grab for my dagger rather than the spear given the situation but just kind of like get ready I think I would have uh, maybe taken a step in front of uh, the saber at this point just like just shocked by the the reaction but yeah my instinct would be to yeah uh, get in between him and her. Anything from anyone else in particular? Uh, I'm kind of struck dumb with horror. I think I'd just step back curious about what is happening here. Absolutely. Um, and Tom, you mentioned kind of stepping in front of Desaber. She sort of reaches up with her free hand that isn't holding the lantern and kind of pats you gently on the arm to reassure you that it's all right and, and, and indicates for you to step to one side slightly. Well, yeah, I will do that. (laughs) 
Um, she looks at Orai quite calmly, and uh, this seems to incite him. Uh, and he roars in in response to this silence with saliva spraying out over all of you. Let me out, or I will rip your heart out, crone! What happened to this man? That is a very good question. Um, she indicates that you should walk perhaps a little away from the cell. He's kind of bunched up against it now, kind of desperately trying to force his head through the bars and like scrabbling out um, at kind of all of you, essentially. Are we all are we all retreating or yep. yeah? Um she nods and says, Exactly what has happened to him is unclear, but the timing seems perhaps more than circumstantial. He does not react well to my presence. His hysteria will die down in a moment or two, and you can try to talk to him. Maybe he will answer your questions more than mine. Maybe you can convince him it may help him to be released in, in a way that may be true. If we can understand what has happened to him, perhaps we can help him. She does not seem confident. We, was we he like try. this? Was he like this when you found him? Oh yes. Mm. And do we know anything of the man he was before this encounter? I believe him to be, from what I can piece together, perhaps someone moving in some of your circles—a cell sword, a warrior. He certainly still had a weapon on him. Nothing of interest. A well-kept sword. Would you be willing to try? Perhaps it would grant you answers. Why are you showing us this? What does this have to do with Anadea or Savola? If Anadea spoke of corruption within the city, I'm sure she had reason. She was, as I say, a, 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 a keen, keen-minded girl. She must have had some reason to approach you with what she approached you with. Perhaps it was linked to the sinkhole. Perhaps there is a threat we have yet to uncover even beyond that. And perhaps this man has something to do with it. Or perhaps not. So she was concerned about corruption. So we're here to speak to some people who have been corrupted. We might get some good out of this. Okay. You're, you're all right. in us. Did, did Anna Dale work in the catacombs? Did she work with the corrupted here? No. Initiates do not come down here. We, we wait until Theurgs have been trained appropriately and have the strength to endure exposure to these matters. She uh, gestures towards Arai, who has indeed calmed down now and is kind of like half hanging off the uh, the bars of the cell, just kind of panting weakly. And she walks off um, at a distance where it is quite tough to gauge whether or not she is in earshot. Can I um, maybe um, just approach her as, as she's leaving and, and mm. have a quick word in her ear? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lightbringer. I don't know if you have heard this news, but it came from one of our previous excursions into Davakar. We understand that dark artists are still abroad, and we know of one of them in Thistlehold. May I give you the names uh, at the least? Dark lords here in Thistlehold? At least one, and two others yet live. We killed one. Or How we do you know of this? Thing. We were attending to a cursed mound in Davakar and in the process of untangling its mysteries, it turned out that one of those entrapped by its magics was a practitioner of the dark ways. He is dead, thankfully, but his writings spoke of the others. She leans forward and kind of put, puts a hand on your arm and says, you must understand, sometimes these things are... Dark Lord's works and the works of those who would emulate them are suffused with lies. 
I do not doubt what you have found and experienced. When you return to me, after ensuring Sarvola's safety, bring these writings to me, and we will we will look at them. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Bringer. She walks off to that indeterminate earshot distance. So I'm going to kind of approach Askarai and um, kind of catch his attention and um, just maybe tap tap my ring finger kind of to him. You think what this guy might be iron packed? It's unlikely, but maybe he would react. If he isn't, maybe he's been abused by them. We might get. Let's see what information we can get. But keep uh, keep that keep that little device handy. Uh, is there any other interactions we want as a group before someone or, or the group approaches or I, if, if that's what you want? I've assumed that that's w what you would like to do in this circumstance, but if you want, people can just go, I've had enough of this and, and walk away, you know? Um, I think I actually would like to approach a Rai. Um, sure. I think I would also like to have another go at which site with him. Absolutely go for it. You know what? I don't think... That Ori has a stat block, and therefore um, he doesn't have um, a shadow description. But I'm sure I can work <laughs> up one of my own. So why don't you uh, why don't you go ahead and give me that roll? That's a fail. Okay, um, save you the trouble. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know it, it. It's not only is it dark down here, but you're probably. Um, you have a lot of emotions running through you right now, kind of, you know, your discomfort at the Sun Temple. Um, your, I, I think it, would it be fair to say a kind of conflicted emotion about being down here in that you want to believe that the Sun Temple, Temple is capable of horrible things and this has all the atmosphere of horrible things, but also this man is clearly dangerous? Uh, yeah, I think that's a reasonable summary. Like, it's... Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to see this man let out. Um, but I do also wonder what other kinds of people they keep down here and what right. kind of sure. reasons they cook up for doing so. Uh, maybe, maybe some of them are former Templars who have um, mystical powers, um, and that would be I mean, who knows? Unfortunate. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, you, as you get closer to him, you, are you going to start speaking to him? Uh, anyone who approaches, he's kind of looks up at you and he's just kind of panting and exhausted with like, he's got a kind of like, uh, probably, probably a beard about the same length as mine, um, that's now kind of like soaked in spittle uh, and just kind of, he even has like maybe his tongue slightly hanging out. He just looks exhausted by his assault at the bars of the of his of his cell. Um. I, I don't know if the others want to jump in and say what they're doing, but yeah, I was going to strike up a conversation. Go for it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not with the church, not anymore. If that's a concern to you, I just want to know what happened to you. Will you speak? I am. I am well. Will. Will you release me? If we can understand the series of events that brought you here, they say they may be able to find a way to make you well enough to walk out of here one day. Can you give me a um, roll of probably what's not a very good stat for you? Uh, persuasive. Yeah, I'm not the person plus, to do this. Plus one. Okay. But other so, other people can attempt it. You know, if a Lindra fails. I'm I'm looking for an eight. We get a two. Oh, okay. nice. Happy so, days. Nice. Almost the best roll. It's um, the for second anyone watching, best unfamiliar roll. by the way. So in Simbaroom, it's a D20 system, but you aim to roll low, so that two is good. Um. Um. He looks up at you and and kind of opens his mouth as if to talk and then you feel you, you see something inside of him and you don't think it's like the one time this has happened you think he's maybe weaving in and out of 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 sanity a little bit um as he is and you you almost see something snap inside his brain um and he just starts honestly to what to you feels like 
somewhat rambling. We we left. We left for the depths. For the for the trees. She led us. The woman. The changeling. The butcher with the axe. What woman? Uh, uh, there were ten, ten, a hundred people with us. Sorcerers, killers, beast-jawed barbarians, black beasts, minstrels, drummers. Four faceless girls. He's fixing his eyes on yours. You are, it has to be said, not entirely sure about how much sense this is all making. So, are you asking him anything further? Um, I'll, I'll, I guess I will repeat the original question of what happened. What happened to you in this place? I am... I am back in Thistlehold, am I not? I returned. I returned. I escaped. I escaped the black-eyed bloodthirst of my calf love. I escaped. I am here. Back in Thistlehold. What happened to the others? I, I don't know. They cut off the antlers and the hoofs and followed the Whispering Skull to Rada Valadla, to the Black Heart of Davakar. Simbaroom, it will awaken, but I am back. I returned. I returned. He's blinking and kind of looking at you with some puzzlement as if he's only just realised you're there. He doesn't seem to be coming to any more sense of awareness, but every time he talks to you, he seems to sink into some kind of reverie. If it was a group of a hundred, I can probably trace it through the uh, through the outbound gates. One group of a hundred with Ordo Magica and and barbarians. I wouldn't I, always leave at once. I would note that he said he said first that there were ten of them, and then yeah. he said there were a hundred. Yeah, them, yeah, so. I, I know, but I'm working on the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like pick up the details the you can. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to make yeah. sure that yeah. people um, knew the confusingness. I okay, that's all. I don't think I can get anything from him except that who, whoever he was with, they went too deep. And there was a skull that whispered, and we have experience with enchanted skulls from that cursed forest, don't we, gentlemen? Is anyone uh, anyone throwing out kind of further comments or questions, or kind of trying to pull more details from it in any way? Doesn't doesn't have to be a Lindra or or Steve, it can be can be anyone. You know, I'll, I'll say to him. I'll say to him. Does the name Helianor mean anything to you? He kind of blinks in in puzzlement and looks at you and and says, "No." It wasn't her. It wasn't her that put the sword in my back. When it went dark, steel like ice. That was my payment. I never received any silver coins. They hired me, though. A day ago, ten days ago, a moon ago, they hired my sword. And then put another in my back. I'll um, cast Askarai the glance and once again tap my ring finger. Askarai will just get out the ring and put it on in a very conspicuous way. Although making sure he's facing away from uh, the light bringer. He uh, kind of focuses on... Um the the iron ring that you proffer and, and looks at it kind of puzzlingly like he he seems to not be immediately provoked or 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 inspired by it but he sort of like looks at it as if is it is something he does not understand the meaning of but which he knows is significant and just kind of peers 
uh, peers closely at it. At, at the end of the road, a god, ancient hooves of gold and antlers of diamond. We, they, they wanted to dismember it. Make it dead, dead, dead. They attacked it. It did nothing to defend itself. The axe struck at its neck until the head came away. It kept on lowing. The sound, the sound cut me to pieces. But it didn't die. Neither did I. Black mists covered the world. Sweet darkness. He staggers back away from the bars, kind of pouring at his eyes slightly like a, like a toddler or a child would when they're in need of sleep. And he staggers back onto a bunk at the back of the cell and kind of collapses there, bundles himself up in, in the, uh, the sheets that have been laid on it, turns his back to you and starts quietly sobbing. Big job to kill a god. I think you've got one or two Asker right now. <sighs> no, no gods killed for me. I'm sure one day they uh, would get their revenge. It sounds like or I didn't kill his god either. Well. Nor did his employers kill him. Lots yes. of, I think you are right in your first assessment, Alindra. You go too deep in that forest, and strange things follow you out. Just sounds I, like sorcery to me. I would very much like to leave this place now. Yeah, I think our next stop will be uh, trying to call in some favors with the Ordo Magica to figure out what particular resident of the northern forest has hooves of gold and antlers of diamond um indeed uh the uh G Ganderold did offer you the aid of of going to the auto magica's archives which absolutely could help you um as you uh walk as a group unless anyone else wants to say anything um or i seems insensible mostly at the back of the the, the cell but does anyone else want to do anything while they're here before you return to deceiva where she's standing i think i'll um i think i'll call, kind of call out and go we'll, we'll do our best if there's a way out we won't forget this i would take the ring off before we go back okay um as you uh walk over to deceiva um she nods and says well i i hope Perhaps something that poor soul said to you helps you and helps helps Anadea with whatever she wanted to do. do I you believe know? you showed Father Elfano possessions of hers. May I? Yeah, I, I, uh, I guess that maybe Anton has them now and I'll present the, the small bell purse to her. Everything inside. She kind of looks at it, um, she she opens it and kind of glances through, kind of looks at the, the, the penny slightly before putting it back. Um, she gives a slight hiss between her teeth as she taps the, the pearl so it rolls around inside the coin purse. She glances up at you and says, I would assume that the first Theurg spoke of this and indicates the pearl. He warned us of the corruption within it. I think it may be an item dangerous to tinker with without learning. She uh, picks up uh, the key with the uh, kind of the simple key with the elaborate bit, kind of looks at it and says almost to the air as if, you know, you know, just an idle thought that crosses her mind. She says, the Queen's legation near night home has logs and details of properties and places 
She places it back in the coin purse. And then, uh, and I am going to, uh, <laughs> I am going to give Deceiver the Lightbringer a chance to find what you folks didn't. Uh, <laughs> so her vigilant isn't that high. I will also give Sam a chance to actually roll for this himself as well. Um, if Deceiver doesn't doesn't find it, there we go. Um, Deceiver kind of peers more closely at um, the coin purse and gives a, a kind of little note of surprise and uh, looks up at Steel and says, "Could I?" Have a little more light from that lantern of yours, please. I will shuffle. She uh, puts her hand inside the coin purse and rummages around a little bit and, and seems to kind of put two fingers just behind a seam that holds together the front of it. And with a with a with like a little sticky, like snapping noise, it comes apart. A, a little hidden compartment heel, sealed up with perhaps some kind of tree sap or something like that. She gives a little uh, expression of um, uh, joy at having solved this small puzzle uh, and reaches in with two fingers and pulls out what seems to be a folded piece of parchment, which she nods and tucks back in unread and then holds the coin purse out to you, saying, another secret, perhaps. We thank you for your wisdom and guidance, Your Holiness. She nods and says, "I will escort you out to the to the light yard, and then, well, I I do hope you look in on Father Savola soon, and perhaps identify those who seek to do him harm. But I'm sure you have a lot of things you need to be doing." And she um, starts leading you up the up the stairs out of the catacombs, unless anyone else wants to do anything in particular. Um, I have a I have a dagger which I assume I keep concealed <laughs> to behind the back. No, <laughs> so, just to say that as we as we're kind of coming out past the Templars and past the guards, I will have that close to hand. Sure, essentially, I'm absolutely. just keeping a very close eye on everybody around us as we come out. I thought for a second you were going to go full, <laughs> like, you know, full beer and pretzels, nerd ho <laughs> hobo role player, and just be like, I'm going to stab the living saint in the back just for the yucks. Um, <laughs> good. I'm, I'm glad that didn't there are, there are versions of this scene that play out that way, but not today. Sure. Um, <laughs> So you uh, exit. She waves you a, a brief goodbye as you go out into the light yard. That kind of open um, area on the interior of the Sun Temple, full of supplicants and theurgs, um, and generally people who are very um, unhappy and alarmed and anxious about the events in Thistlehold over the last few days, and are seeking the guidance of Prios. Um, where are we going? You have so many things that we have we have mentioned as possibilities, and just to recap them for people, um, there's the Father Sarvola stuff. Um, there is the Ordo Magica and the archives there. Deceba just mentioned the Queen's Legation. Uh, the Queen's Legation is essentially kind of uh, the Queen's agent, the Queen's legate um, in Thistlehold, like uh, the, the you know the the presence of royalty in Thistlehold, which also, as she mentioned, has archives of their own and and kind of details on owners of property and places where there might be a key in in thistlehold and all sorts of stuff like this i think also we've had um is that it is that everything i think you got you've the mentioned trying nuts. to get an yeah yeah, yeah i think, I think you've first mentioned thing. trying to get an appointment with night pitch and also this note and oh my word <laughs> um shall we say that it is probably early afternoon uh, for whatever you want to do so yeah. absolutely simbrooming right here I think yeah. first thing, surely we would read this note. Like, yeah, I think that is probably the case. Yes. Are you going to go somewhere kind of private to do that, or are you just getting out here? You know how how risky do we think it is? I think we'll go to a pub, get an invitation to go to a back alley and get stabbed, <laughs> <laughs> and then off. we'll think then about what we read the do. note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are, are we going back to the witch and familiar to kind of? I think so. <laughs> Is there another pub that's closer? Because yeah, you know what? Let's let's try for another pub uh, that is a bit closer, right? 
Um, much as I just go back there every time. Yeah, you know, you're I, right. Well, I think I think on the to-do list is also go back to the Witch of Familiar and see if the Mystery Woman has another stab at finding us and finding out why she tried to kill us. Yeah, but sure. I, I I'm not sure that Elindra is in the mood for um for for meeting any assassins would be assassins right now. Yeah. No, that seems <laughs> that seems fair enough. That so seems I'll, um, fair enough. You know what? I'll suggest the Rose Garden, which is uh, number 11, uh, which I think is pretty close to where we are, unless I'm horribly mistaken. Um, let me just check where you are first. I, thank you for looking up at that. That was literally what I was doing. So it's good to know that uh, someone else has got my back with that. 28. Uh, so we're at 28 on the image. John, can you bring up a map of Thistlehold, please, for us? Um, where is 11? 11 is quite far Oof. away, and he's also yeah, quite near far. the Witch and Familiar, which is 10, I, oh no, 9, uh, I believe. The nearest one here, you know, um, Brew looks to be close, um, which is in um, the Eastern Square there. And let's see if we can get um, a nice description of Brew. You know what? I think at this point, uh, because, uh, yeah, if anyone's curious, the Sun Temple is 29 there, kind of halfway up the town over on the east side. Uh, and then two, as you can see, is kind of a bit further to the east with the Eastern Square nearby it. Um, you know what? As you walk there and I look up what that place is like, um, why don't you guys have a conversation? Because I, I feel like I'm not throwing it at you, you know, GM mandated conversation here. I feel like there's a lot to talk about right now. Uh, am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. Nope. Cool. Okay, so I'll leave you to it while I look up what this place is like. Are you um, are you okay, Alan? Um, I am just appreciating the air and being out of that place. It did look like you were about to have a go at the She's a, uh, the situation. She's a pompous hypocrite. I don't know. I think anyone who speaks well of Father Savola when their own first theurg has spoken uh, has decried them a heretic. Oh, so there may be more going on politically in that organization than I had previously acknowledged. So now mm -hmm. the church talks about welcoming and helping the heretics, the heretics that they made. Yeah. The heretics Down in those people. catacombs, were they helping those people? Was that help? Was that I what help it. looks like? Elindria, is it possible that the, the lady that we just spoke to is guided by a higher force and maybe knows and understands more about this, this world than you or I. I think it's also possible <laughs> that um, the politics of the situation may... The work. politics of the situation is that the, the church wants to save lives, it doesn't want to cause civil unrest and... As a town guard, Theo, a former town guard, surely you can appreciate that. I'm not disagreeing with you at all, Anton, old fellow, but um, Saving I'm lives. also not disagreeing with the fact that Alindra makes some points that the church chooses more enemies than it needs to. The um, church of the many in Castor, none of them were coded in sin and corruption, and they've been cast out pretty thoroughly, haven't they? Yeah, that's it, how you it get is. the church of the many. It is thanks to the work of the church that we have more information to, to, to lead us towards what's going on right now. Listen, true. Anton, can I, I, I'm, I am not for a second questioning your faith. I share it. That church is an organization made of people and from top to bottom, it is every bit as dirty and corrupt and hypocritical as as people our own father the, Antum is a member of that church and he's proven a, a staunch ally through a lot of difficult times i a i don't i don't find it harder to believe that this disabler could equally be a good person trying to do good as savola certainly seems one of the better ones Regardless job, of what the church wants, I'm happy to help him. Yeah, you're, you're, our job today is not to discern whether or not the church is redeemable, irredeemable. I don't know. Our job today is to help that heretical priest who is actually doing good. And I've seen no. him running soup kitchens. This guy is is someone who I want to stay in Thistlehold and to stay alive if he's under threat. 
for the safety and security of this town. I have an interest in its preservation. I, I don't disagree with the works, Theo. I don't much care about the work either way. I don't know who these people are. You asked me how I was and how I am is happy to be out of that place. Yeah, That's, that's how I am. I told her about the Dark Lords. She all but brushed me off. Well, um, Anton, can you give me a vigilant roll, please? I can. Um, hang on, it might be modified by something. Uh, well, yes, I, it's, modi it's modified by minus five, so. Oh, okay, then I still make it. I rolled a six. Nice. Wow, well then. Um, does you, do you have any kind of like uh, pouch or bag you carry with you, or does your rope have pockets? Kind of, How do you carry small items around? Yeah, I, I think like deep pockets within the within my robe and cloak because uh, like it's, it's awesome sign, right? So I'd probably be wearing my yeah. like, like a heavier cloak by now. Um, a young woman uh, brushes past you and seems to uh, touch your pocket for a moment longer than should be appropriate. And you know, this is this will hold. You're not entirely unfamiliar with the concept of cut purses and the like uh, but she kind of like brushes into you and then is, is now kind of walking away behind you quite calmly she looks like maybe a market vendor something along those lines she does not have long fair hair and is dressed all in brown in case we were um, al immediately alarmed <laughs> about that concern uh well uh, instantly i'm just gonna um uh, uh like uh like kind of touch the person who who is next to me get her attention and i will go after this woman uh at, at a, a sort of a faster walking pace than she is and i will also ready my dagger and get ready to press it against her back <laughs> all right then um are you kind of kind of checking your pocket in any way uh, yeah, probably. Like as as I've got my dagger out, I will be like padding down my pocket sure. just to make sure. That... Um, your pocket has a piece of paper in it that it did not have before. Okay, in that case, the, the woman the dagger is, is has going kind away. of the woman's kind of looked over her shoulder uh, at you and says sorry, and just kind of starts walking away quite fast now. Okay, reverse pickpocket. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, okay, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a look at this note. Okay, right, right so presumably here. you're kind of coming more to a halt now after you're yeah, 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 your alarm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the person next to you, let's say, was uh, Steo. Um, so Steo's probably looking a bit confused. Chris, would that be? I'd say so. I was. I, I saw Anton um, go for a dagger, and I was already with the pole arm, and now I'm kind of trying to make that look as like I'm just scratching my back with like a, a, a five foot spear. <laughs> sure. Um, Absolutely. Well, the the young woman kind of disappears into the crowd if you're not actively pursuing her and is very quickly out of sight. Um, you've got that piece of paper out of your pocket. John, let's bring that up. I think, I hope you've got the right one. I think you probably do. There we go. Um, Anton, would you like to read that out, please? If it's too scrawly. Oddly on Twitter, I saw just today a, a, or yesterday a thing about how handouts in, in books are hard to read, but Tell me if you can't do it, and we'll um, I'll, I'll read it out myself. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see how my cursive interpretation goes. Yeah. Uh, what you seek is in the annex of the Sun Temple. Two times a day at the Mass held each morning and evening, the building is empty except for their house. I'm struggling here. I think it's House, house Father Idaros. Yeah. When you uh, see him leave, you have a short time frame to get inside. Uh, go through the gate facing... A failure road, a failure's yeah, road, a failure's road, or a Kellyer's road. Yeah. Take the stairs to the second floor, turn right, and head for the third door on the right-hand side. Act with haste. So, Desaber said that um, Anadea's rooms were in the annex of the Sun Temple. Oh well, sounds like a job for you, Anton. I don't quite fancy sneaking around the Sun Temple three times in one day. Uh, so, um, I think we're quite near Brew now, <laughs> uh, and it's probably worth. I think I think there's about to be a serious conversation about our next actions um, and what perhaps to do. Um, let's talk about Brew. It's a rather upmarket um, salon, a beer salon with many different beers on offer. Um, it, 
And I think, like, it's up to you, uh, Stephen, how much Alindra knows about this and whether she's familiar with it. But I think the others of you, especially Steo and Askarai, are very familiar with the taverns of this are old enough to know these details. Uh, it is run by an elderly couple, Caglio and Sunna, who claim to have been successful as brewers already before the move north from the Titans. Their assortment spans from fermented malt beverages, like the commonly available Stutt, to triple fermented and very strong specialities with names like Ertal and Adacel. Uh, since three years past, they also serve the beverage Volume, stemming from Clan Vajvod's proud brewing tradition. It is not as strong as Black Brew, but just as full-bodied, full-bodied? full-bodied and much more palatable. Even though it's located outside Haliband's ring, it can become rough in there at times. The clientele primarily consists of successful fortune hunters resting in between expeditions, and their boasting has an unfortunate tendency to translate into brawls. But by and large, it's not too rough. It's up market as fortune hunter places. Love an RPG game with tasting notes. Yeah. There we go. Um, you head into Brew. It's fairly calm at this time of day, and especially most of the taverns at the moment are a little bit empty as as, as people are still in shock over the events of the last couple of days. Um, the main person to be noted in there, as uh, he is usually in there, is a huge, fearless ogre called Brute, who is hired to break brawlers apart and to hurl them out onto the eastern square. Uh, no one picks a fight with Brute, and uh, he is sat... Um, kind of knees bunched up around his chest um, on one on a very large bench over at the side of Brew, uh, with his head brushing the ceiling, uh, and next to him the old crone he calls Mimum, uh, who is rumored to be an aged and incredibly powerful barbarian witch. Nice. Did I hear you right when you said that he was hired to break brawlers apart? Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. you can interpret right. this two ways, right? <laughs> apart or Just apart. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, walking in here, I'll be like, oh, lads and lady, imagine me in full plate drinking at brew instead of just working it. Even out in the world. Um, Caglio and Sonna serve you with your, um, you know, <laughs> um, uh, beer, of, uh, beer of choice. And uh, you can find a table to yourselves very easily in maybe a quiet corner. Uh, it's generally quite quite a nice, pleasant atmosphere. There's only the occasional um, like clinking and scratching noises, brute shifts, or looks at his very large sword and picks bits of rust off it with a fingernail. Well, the note, well, the the original note, not the original the, note, this other note, the uh, um, the, the wonder saber in. found, yeah. In Anadea's coin purse. Yeah, let's have a look at that, shall we? And and who wants? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, who? Okay. Keeps going <laughs> you have up to and read down. it very quickly. Um, who wants to read this? Who do we think will be getting it out and looking at it first? It's probably Anton, right? Like, yeah, you're the carrying the, you're the reader. <laughs> I know my letters. <laughs> in strife and sorrow. This offer is the only one you will receive. Decline and mourn alone. Accept and follow my confidant. We will meet where no tear falls in vain. I am waiting. You are needed. Tiara Tiana. If I don't just, know if I've got the name right. The, the, we'll use the, the French pronunciation of that E, so it'll be Tiara Tiana. Okay. Not because they're French, but because, you know, we have to pick a convention and it might as well be French. So I feel like I can sit back for another, about 20 minutes while you discuss what the hell to do next. Oh, there's another name we're going to have to have a rummage through. That looks like that looks like one of the north, northern names, doesn't it? We can run that. Uh... Uh, Askarai, I think you can roll a bit of cunning there. Okay. Uh, we can run that past Alamar or maybe Dirac. Dirac's not really in the barber in with the uh, Northerners I, anymore. I did make my cunning roll. Roll the eight. That does not read like a name of someone from the barbarian clans to you. You have a sinking suspicion. You know what kind of name that is. I know what kind of name that is from I'm your heritage. 
Ah. From the from the what the things you haven't learned much about the people of the forest, but you have, you know, from what you tried to pick up over the years to learn more about your heritage, it it rings like their names do. I'll say, perhaps a northerner's name, but not a human name, in my opinion, at least. Goblin or. Perhaps elf. And the day I talked about the elves. Does not seem an unkind note, though, not the note, not a promissory note for death. No, but slightly threatening nonetheless. Decline and mourn alone. I think one for the ever increasing list of things we need to look at, but does not. It has lain undiscovered so far for this many days. I'm sure it will last another day. Likewise, the other things that we may have to do. Visiting the Queen's Legation, which I I assume that the Sabre was talking about that in terms of maybe that's where we can find an address for this key. So that yeah. and the Auto Magicka archives feel like they may be less immediately requiring action than this Father Sarvola. Yeah, I think our next step might be to go and uh, see if we can chat to one of his handlers and mention that we've been asked to try and break up some of the more organized elements of his harassers and begin gathering information for that. I'm not at all clear how the four of us stop a mob it's not the mob you have to kill it's just the leader oh so we're, we're, we're killing now are we yeah to save the, lives at the end of the conversation she asked for information on who those people were rather than for us to directly intervene sure Matt, can you can you clarify whether I've just like, yeah no yeah yeah she she asked for you to try and find find a ringleader um I, I think yeah. the general impression is that she's leaving action into into in your hands to a certain degree just kind of trying to keep trying to make sure not kind of watching over him and keeping him safe but just trying to find out who is orchestrating these attacks presumably returning to her and maybe she'll give you extra instructions off the back of that or 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 maybe not but um yeah, she was she was clear that she needed a degree of distance and plausible deniability from anything done to protect him, though, right? Like Correct. it's not like bring me a name and we'll send in the Templars. Correct, and you you definitely got the an impression from her that um, this arrangement between her and you is something that should not be um, discussed outside your circle. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, I'm going to be frank. This uh, um, Savola. I have a soft spot for the man. Anyone who is actually preaching Prios's truth and feeding people goes um, pretty high up in my book. And um, I'm perfectly fine with killing people if it preserves the security and safety of the majority in this town. And this town's been pretty badly wounded, and I'm actually pretty angry about it. The only thing with Savola, as much as he seems like a, a as good a man as any in the church, but feels like it's not really directly leading towards anything. It feels like we have more pressing issues with the sinkhole and whatever happened to Arai and helping Salvola at the moment is just a kind of side issue, really. Perhaps, I, but the threat against his life is immediate. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't talking about what is the most important. I was talking about what is the most time critical. If we're going to help Salvola... That's probably not something to put off. Yeah. And we should right. probably get that pearl looked at by the Order of Magic if we have enough favors to call in with them. Yeah, the research, the archives, the Queen's Legation, these are all things that we want to do and find out about. Uh, none of them are going to result in people dying if we don't get around to it all today. Yeah. Well, hopefully. 
Trientena. Well. And all right, the 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 troubled gentleman in the in the catacombs, the dungeon, the jail, I suppose, mentioned that he was brought on board by a changeling. And if you're saying Askry, that name is potentially elf kind. And we have been haunted by a person with a phenomenally generic description who has tried to kill us in a very insulting manner, might I add. Perhaps yeah. a changeling in the guise of someone. I wonder if we might find some information by asking about who was hiring a large amount of cell swords yeah, in the past month. Be. I think that was going to be a question. While that is absolutely a thing you can do, um, it's going to be a big list. Yeah. I think the the key to that is he mentioned 10 and he mentioned 100. Like 100? Oh, yeah. 100, yes. That would that would absolutely stand out. Not many people will have been hiring 100 strong expedition into the forest. Over yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll phrase that. that. So, um, uh, if anyone. T t 10 people, you've no chance. 100 people. A hundred strong expeditions to a month at max, absolute maximum. And all so, the magic involvement, formally <clears throat> or informally, would th there'll be a paper trail for that. If not at the gate records, then at the Ordo, and if not at the Ordo, then at Mother Mahira's, we have ways to get that information. Yeah, the agency seemed to be the place to start with that. You just don't get that many cell swords together in one place. I'm not. Sorry, I'm not in any way gainsaying you, Chris, but where are you getting auto magic from? I'm just curious. Because they mentioned, I think he mentioned that there were sorcerers, or not so, sorcerers, killers, bright beasts. Um, I think I think auto magic was mentioned somewhere in his in his he, shop. It, definitely auto magic wasn't mentioned. Just just so you know that, just so okay. we have we have the clarity there. Um, sorcerers, absolutely. I guess some people would call auto magic a sorcerers. Sorcerers, though, is a very specific term for people who pa practice sorcery. Um, I thought auto magic were more wizards. They are wizards, technically. Yeah, yeah I don't want to get into like to class this up um but like if someone uh, an order magic are being referred to if you refer to them as a sorcerer they would take that as a a deathly insult um because sorcerers are people you burn because they're trying to corrupt the world um so yeah just so you know yeah, sorcerers are kind of yeah, sort of corrupt necromancery magic. People, yeah, yeah, whereas... dark lordy kind of. Yeah, yeah. Whereas people a... having truck with demons and the like. Yeah. Wizard, as I understand it, is something slightly more science magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like natural philosophers who employ yeah. kind of like manipulation of of magic to to like. Yeah, absolutely. Just so we know, you can absolutely take sorcerers as automatic. I'm not saying it's not that. I just wanted us to, to, uh, to be clear. That's all. My other thought yeah. is, and I know this is one we won't steer in particular, will not enjoy, but a group of 100 people moving through the forest near to Karabadok. Possibly we could find some trace of them where they went, if they were there at all. Yeah, let's keep the forest at the bottom of the list of our priorities to go poking around for clues, yeah. yeah. Without, right. without having the map up, by the way, I believe um, there are a couple of... Uh, there are a few settlements quite near to um, Thistlehold. To the west is Glimmervan, where Anton went on one quite horrible trip. Um, to the east, kind of to the southeast, is Blackmoor, which is a vast... Uh, basically a vast refugee camp, um, which is all kind of tents and squalor. And then I believe to the north of Blackmoor is Karabadoc, which is the, the the goblin village. I could be wrong on some of those directions. In chat, if you if you want to um, argue with the GM, please let me uh, let me know and correct that if you. So it's not in the forest then, if it's close to Blackmoor. Um. But we'll get we'll get clarity on I that. I mean, it is near the way. forest because you are near the forest here. Yeah, but so. not in the. It's a very, no, no, I don't <laughs> think Karabadok is in the forest. No, I could be wrong. Mm. Um, what's this? What's the technical name for a fear of trees? I think Steve's well on his way to that. <laughs> okay, so I think Anton. So I think we've all agreed that the note about the directions to sneak into the temple refer to the location of the chambers of our now deceased informant friend um, right. and that must be worth investigating 
I think it is. I also think for the sake of discreetness, you going alone would make more sense than all of us going. Um, it's, in case it hasn't been um, kind of clear, by the way, you suspect that essentially what this note is offering you is a um, stealthy way to to achieve what Deceiver is offering you. I, I was going to ask about that because, like, she, like she's kind of given us, uh, you know, the the, the go ahead to like investigate this a little bit more, right? But yeah, so I mean, her Deceiver blessing, basically... I could just walk in there and say, like, "Hey, could I have a look at?" Yeah, I mean, she she said that she will grant you official access to Deceiver's rooms and the, the items within, uh, not to Deceiver's rooms, to Anadea's rooms and the items were in. If you perform this service for her as a high-ranking member of the church, she can do that for you. Um, what this note seems to be offering, telling you, is how to sneak in and just get it yourselves. So, I guess you have a choice. Uh, well, I, like, th there, there is no point in me surreptitiously entering uh the the the, the chambers of uh oh, i've forgotten her bloody name uh yeah Anadea. The, the, yeah, yeah. The, 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 there's no there's no there's no point in us doing that because i i have made a, a promise to disable that we i will help her with the father savola issue so that has to be done yeah that's our priority anyway as alinda yes. mentioned that is the pressing concern yeah i i I, I don't know the man. You all seem to hold him in high regard. So if we're going to go and do that regardless, let's do that. We know that we have an alternative means uh, of getting into Anadea's chambers. At the time, if this goes wrong. Yeah. Let's try and... I don't think this, the town would survive his death along with all the other death in the last month. I think we're going to go to a service this afternoon, friends. To Sarvola's? I'd say so. Uh, Matt. <laughs> Elindra I, doesn't seem too happy. <laughs> I, I, this is this is far more Prius business than I expected when I woke up this morning. <laughs> It's certainly thought, more than we've had to deal with so far. I thought we were going to drop off a bag. They were going to say, sure, we know the family. <laughs> Quite. Okay. All right. Okay. And Mike, you were good. Well, Mike, rather than Anton, was going to ask me a question. Yeah, it? I was going to ask something out of character. Like, I like when myself and Askerai sort of like went to one of uh, Father Savola's uh, sermons before. I think I did a persuasive role that was maybe semi-successful that didn't succeed in getting the information that I wanted out of him, but I did convince him that I wasn't a priest of Prios, I think. And I was trying to remember what I told quite, him I was. Quite possibly. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I can't. That was like a little vignette we did between stories. Yeah, yeah, it was. I can't remember too much about it. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'm perfectly happy that that was the case. Okay. Um, however, you are fairly sure that Sarvola sees hundreds of people a day. Okay. Um, and you know, and, and what's more, like priests of 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 Prios would be welcome at the mission house, as everyone is. Um, so you you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Ultimately, you don't know. I, if you're worried okay, about it, may, maybe you don't go near him or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. I th I think that when I met him before, I maybe wasn't wearing my priest robes and stuff like that because sure. that would have been a stupid thing to do but yeah okay big I'm just, false just... beard <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so yeah no that's fine that's fine okay sure no but it's cool it's cool let's remember that and and account for it maybe i'll maybe i'll give him a roll if it's easier to, to see if he remembers what you're meant to look like i regret bringing this up already yeah i, I, <laughs> I love it equally so it sounds to me folks this is still kind of mid-afternoon at brew um, you've had your you've had your beers. Um, it sounds like the order of the day, or, although Alindra has both proposed it and is not happy about it. Um, that you're going along to Sarvola's mission house, scout out the terrain there, kind of see what's going on, maybe find a way to talk to the guy. Is that the general idea? I think that's the the gist of it. Yeah. 
Okay, wonderful. Um, John, could you bring up the map of Thistlehold again for us? And while you do, I'm going to offer a quick explanation. I know someone in in chat, and if I can find it, I'll eat. I'll say their name. Um, uh, someone suggested using there is a version. Ah, Lowen, you suggested using the version of the map that has the sinkhole on it. That would be an excellent idea. But for one small problem, um, the main locations of the story of this story of Wrath of the Warden are marked on it. And sure, they're only marked with like uh, like markers with letters on them rather than like descriptions of the scene, but it still tells people where the important things in the story are going to happen. Um, so I'd, I'd rather not. Um, I'd rather not. But it is a very good suggestion otherwise, because having the sinkhole on there is really cool. Uh, maybe we can find a way to um, to get a version without those markers on. Or just so. doctor this map with the sinkhole. Or just doctor mark. this map with the sinkhole. That is probably the solution there. That is probably the solution. But thank you for the suggestion. It was a very good suggestion, if not for that. Um, so, um, yeah, Sarvola's Mission House... And maybe this is interesting, like the others of you know where it is. Maybe it's interesting to Alindra because it seems maybe quite odd. Um, uh, the mission house is at 32, which is center at the bottom. And uh, the more eagle-eyed of you will see that it is really not very far from, uh, I believe that's the main city guard barracks. Uh, there at 34 and stuff, right? That's where you went during Mark of the Beast I think it's and stuff 13 like that. Is, is the big barracks, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 13? Yeah, Where's 13, 13 is the Chris? barracks. It's it's uh, the southmost encampment. 13 and 33 are kind of the... It's to the right of, of Night Home. Uh, that's marked as 14, 34, and 39 on this one here. Oh, wow. You are not wrong. I have a different version of the map. Oh, yeah. you may well do. Yeah, you may well do. There are slightly different version, different versions of them, just to confuse people. Um, I, I can't remember if this is the one from the call book or from... Um, Wrath of the Warden, but either way, that bit at the bottom there is the, is the barracks that you can see near that near the south gate. Uh, he said, circling it with his mouse, and so no one can see. Uh, but directly above that is the mission house. So Father Sarvola's mission house, you might imagine it to be in some, some kind of out of the way or area of the poor. It's actually not. It's actually in a quite a market area, um, and quite close to the city barracks and to Night Home itself, the uh, the home of Mayor Nightpitch. So unusual. Um, as you approach the Mission House of Sarvola, um, you can see that it is absolutely thronged with um, with people. Uh, there are great masses and crowds around it uh, and outside it, and there is a huge queue of individuals kind of leading into uh, the mission house itself, the majority of which is a uh, like an assembly hall, which, and I think I've described this before, it's like a large, it, it's one story, but it's kind of a large story, and the ceiling is kind of patched up with pe pieces of canvas, um, and generally has the idea of being quite a, you know, a ramshackle um, sort of building. It seems to have uh, a couple of very small rooms on one far end of it, which are presumably Father Sav Savola's quarters, um, and one entire um, wall of this assembly hall has been mostly removed. It still has some kind of pillars of stone and brick leading up to hold the rough roof in place, but it's mostly, mostly open to the side, presumably so when Father Savola delivers his, um, delivers his sermons, he can be heard by a larger crowd than could be heard by um, just the assembly hall being full itself. Um, all along... Uh, one interior wall of that assembly hall is a uh, very large but simple tapestry uh, depicting the sinking sun of Prios in yellow on blue. Uh, and as I say, there's a, a massive uh, group of people here, and uh, you definitely have to find your way out of the general crowd and more towards that big crew queue of people in order to see further into what's kind of happening and going on within the assembly hall itself um there are plenty of people kind of just moving and roaming around you know you wouldn't stand out massively if you chose to leave the general crowd and go near the queue but not join it if you see what i mean there's no the, like there's no kind of tension to the crowd this is just like a normal kind of popular i mean so. there is tension but really it, it it's the tension of the city um as it is 
um, you know, the tension of the events of the last couple of days. Um, you can you can hear people like crying in the crowd and, and people kind of um, bemoaning that that Prios has abandoned them and things like that. Some people could just kind of mute with 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 sadness and fear. Um, so there is a tension to the air, but it's not one of like you know, it's not a mob. It's not kind of imminent violence or anything like that. Okay. Are there like? I, I don't know what to call them, like protesters, like people who seem to clearly be against Savola here. There are, there are. There's a, a number of people just scattered around who are engaged in heated but not violent arguments with the followers of Savola, as there are day and and gr a great deal of the night as well in these parts. You know, you've gone past the mission house many times, and and you're very used to this. There are, but they don't seem to be kind of orchestrated, or or, or there to be even particularly more of them than usual. Okay. Um, it's also worth noting that there is a, a small troop of city guards um, stood nearby, eyeing the crowd and eyeing the mission house. Um, and Steo, you have done this duty often enough to know that this is not unusual. They are there all the time. Can I can I take a look at the at the people that seem to be sort of protesting or, or kind of openly against um, Sarvola and? see if I can like either see what kind of people they are or maybe even get close enough to kind of get a sense of what their arguments are. Like I, I it sounds like what he's preaching is different to what the kind of mainstream of the church is preaching, but I mm -hmm. don't know if it's just sort of orthodox. Uh, sure. If it's like little people. points of contention, you know, like medieval Europe style uh, where a major heresy was founded on the notion of whether or not Jesus owned the clothes he wore. Um, that is true, by the way. Um, so, yeah, abso absolutely. Um, why don't you give me a, a vigilant roll at plus three, I think. There's quite a lot of people around and, you know, it's not difficult to get close to them. That's a one. Oh, um, you stumble upon someone having, uh, and it, it looks to be a, an initiate of the, the Sun Temple, in fact, having quite a concerted theological and philosophical debate um, with um, with one of the, the followers of Savola, who clears to be um, a woman of some learning herself. And they're debating back and forth, and it seems to be fundamentally that... Um, Savola's differences with the church are not in the reverence of Prios or or his ascendancy or or even um, the 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 nature of his godhood, but fundamentally about what the church should be doing with that. Um, and fundamentally about Savola thinks the primary goal of the the church of Prios should be helping those in need. Okay. And, you know, uh, kind of making sure they're cared for, making sure the light of Prios shines on everyone, uh, and less focus on kind of the converting of um, the barbarian clans and the, the intrusions into Davakar and the ascendancy of the Sun Temple into political power. Okay. So I suppose what I was trying to get at then is uh, I... I... I think I kind of understand the, the the distinction about their outlooks on on what the church should be doing. Um, does anybody outside of the church care, right? Like, would there be anybody mm -hmm. that wouldn't look at what Savannah is doing and, and kind of going, "Oh, he's giving to the community. That's a good thing." Like, are there are there? Uh, does he have other detractors? Well, he certainly seems to have a lot of followers, uh, and you get the sense that this the sort of this very you know. Um, complex philosophical debate aside you think maybe most of the people around here who don't like Savola don't like him because the church has called him a heretic okay. so he's a heretic so he's dangerous and he's interfering with prios work All right. you know so by by far the primary argument against him is just about the the, the orthodoxy of the church yeah cool. you also hear rumors as de Saber, um hinted at uh, kind of dark mutterings that perhaps the the presence of Savola and the tolerance of the 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 Thistlehold Sun Temple to a certain degree and uh, Mayor Nightpitch's tolerance of him um, has brought this disaster on Thistlehold. Okay. It is you know Prios will that people have suffered. Okay. Ah, uh, so so yeah, right. So what then become what starts as a um, uh, it's just a matter of disagreement over what the church should be doing has become wider because it's been tied to this disaster. It's become tied to that, but also it, it's just a matter of dogma as yeah. well. And and you know the church says he's wrong, 
therefore yeah. he is sinful, therefore we should not approve of him, etc. Um, cool. Obviously, this is a very depressing concept, and hey, it's still happening worldwide to this day in almost every religion you can think of. So, fun, fun stuff. There we go. Cool. Yeah. Um, yes. Thank you. So, um, Anton, you've been here before. How does this work? We don't need to queue to get in, do we? Uh, no. It gets, it gets quieter, does it? I mean, uh, I've worked these. Actually, I should know this. I've worked. I this. think. I think you've all seen. Uh, you, you know, Steel. You're probably the most familiar, having worked this. Um, Salvola work, tends to work day and night, either, um, uh, you know, basically the, the assembly hall, a great deal of the time is effectively like a soup kitchen um, for the, the unfortunate of Thistle Hold. But he also holds sermons there where it's packed to the gills. You know, you can get hardly hardly near it. Um, when there's a queue, what that usually means is that Salvola is seeing individuals and groups um, in the same way a theog would at uh, you know at the light yard where you've been where they were were seeing people and trying to comfort them and trying to give them guidance Savola does the same thing um but uh, the, the individual queue for him is considerably larger than it would be for any particular theog on a on a normal day at the uh, at the light yard so um, it's just a, a long queue, but you can go near the, like I said, go near the assembly hall and get near it without joining the queue. You just need to push through the crowd. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look. But like, I think honestly, friends, the most direct way to do this is just to queue up and take our turn and just kind of go, "Hi, we've we've been engaged to keep an eye to protect you from your more organised attractors." I yeah. agree. Seems, Seems the easiest just to talk to him, just see what he has direct. to say. You got to chat with the man, Tom. What's, what's your measure of the man? Mm, he seems pretty, um, pretty perceptive. I have to say, pretty, um, pre 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 pretty, uh, pretty aware of of uh, the position that he held within this town and the influence that he has, and aware of the risks that come with that. So on I, one side, he is probably going to spot immediately that we've probably been dispatched from the church, but he will also be aware pretty much immediately that he was going to expect that anyway, because he knows that there would be a backlash against the Sun Temple if the, if his uh, mission was disrupted to any great degree. And well, he should have no problem with this because he, he would appreciate the support of the church in this matter yeah in the interest of guile we shouldn't mention it but we should assume that he's going to work it out very quickly i think we'll and just join the queue then yeah I, I don't see why he would automatically know that we had been sent by the church and i don't see how it would be relevant if our job here is to try to protect him in these volatile times then yeah. okay the, we can't rely on the church to assist us in this anyway. As far as I can tell, this protection force for for, for him is is us. Yeah. Whatever else we can muster up from the shadows. Given that there are already people here linking what's happened with uh, Father Savolo's presence, uh, we we could just make out that we've put two and two together and we perceive this to be a threat to his continued preaching in Dizzlehold and we and and you steer especially as a as a member of the town guard yeah we are here to keep the peace and to ensure I, I don't think we need to use guile I just think we need to not mention it yeah I don't it's uh, it, uh, the fact that the light bringer sent us doesn't seem relevant to the fact that we're here to try to protect him and we'd like to know I guess what are we going to ask him? Like where he perceives the threat to be coming from? Yeah, because he must have a good idea of what's going on here. Uh, I would hope so. There's been two two attempts already. I'm sure they've caught somebody or he's seen something that could lead us somewhere useful. Okay, so it sounds to me like you're going to push through the crowd, get a better sense of the area, and join this queue, right? Um, well, first off, let me let me describe what you see when you push out through the crowd. Uh, the figurehead of the mission house is uh, very much active in meeting the people who have come to seek comfort from him. He sits in a simple armchair in a corner of the assembly hall, and in front of him is a long line of people who want to talk to him or just be assured that everything will be all right. Um, there are a number of... Um, 
kind of assistants of his and, and volunteers who, who work the assembly hall, who are walking up and down the line, sharing a few words with people, um, occasionally handing out some uh, kind of cups of water and, and small bowls of broth to, to those waiting, as well as some of the less fortunate individuals um, just, you know, loitering nearby or, or on the edges of the crowd. Um, on a stool uh, next to Sarvola sits a black-haired boy about six years old, legs dangling and dressed in the same kind of dark blue robe as the priest. Uh, the lad looks radiantly happy, as if he does not pick up on the sorrow and fear permeating the atmosphere. Um, and I think we have an image of... of You know what? Let's have Sarvola first, please, John. There he is. Um, he's a uh, tall, lean, somewhat ascetic-looking man. Um, it's tough to tell whether he, he is simply completely bald or whether he has shaved his head clean. Um, and it's also quite difficult to tell his age, but certainly he's not a young man. Uh, and I know I just described his robes as blue, but there he's got brown there. But he does have blue robes because it says he does in the book. So. Um, there we go. And uh, we're okay with just that one for now, please, John. Thank you, John. So no need for the other one just yet. Um, is everyone joining the queue? Or the line mm -hmm. of people? How long do we think this queue? How it's, like it ain't moving fast? I feel like we could make better use of our time than to all sit here in the queue. Well, I am the least subtle of all of you, so I will keep your space if you wish to detach and go for a rummage. The Queen's legation is not far. Perhaps we could head there and get back. It is not. It is not indeed. I'll keep your spot. Okay. Um, uh, how are we splitting? Up there? Like, uh, are we go? Are we splitting down the middle? Are two of you staying here and, and two of you going? Or, or what, what are we doing? Or, or is Askarai just going to the Queen's Legation and kind of seeing what's going on down there? Or what are we doing? I think if we're sending anyone to the Queen's Legation, they need the key. And um, the auspice of some credibility. So probably not changed thing on his end. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom. Yeah, I can go with that. I, mean, I don't know, because you've met this guy before, and I think you're perfectly capable of having the conversation. Maybe I can go to the Queen's Legation. I think I've been there once or twice. I also met him under false pretenses and gave the impression that I was a uh, uh, someone else um having said that that might be quite useful in this situation uh uh I, they, like oh, don't get me wrong you can all just stay in queue if you want like um you know it's just because sam mentioned it i'll go to the location i think i, I, I know the location I'll, I'll stay here in the queue i'll go with you okay. yeah i've never been a fan of queuing okay i'll i'll stay in the queue okay so we've got i'm tom and alindra okay, staying at the mission house Askarai and Steo heading off to the Queen's Legation. We've got Absolutely. the ostensibly pre us people talking, sure. to, the, talking to the father. Let's this is ostensibly let's... sketchy property speculators. I'm <laughs> loving, that, that, loving that glimpse into Askarai's Q hating backstory as well. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that comes out a little yeah. bit more. They yeah. don't queue in the, in the barbarian clan, so I'm just, you know, just not used to it. It's a weird Ambrian tradition, queuing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, what? Um, let's let's deal with the the two going off to the um, the the Queen's Legation first, shall we? Let's uh, let's deal with that. So, um, Steo and Askarai, you uh, proceed off um, through the south of the town, and as you say, the Queen's Legation is not too far away from the Mission House at all. Uh, if we could have the map up again, please, John. Uh, and the Queen's Legation is uh, number 30. So if we just look to the to the left of where the Mission House is at 32, there at the South Centre, we'll see that the Queen's Legation is basically outside the gates of Night Home. So, um, yeah, it's not very far for you to go at all. Uh, and the Queen's Legation is housed inside a grand two-storey building, as I say, right outside the gates of Night Home. Uh, the western wing includes lodgings, and on the second floor is a majestic hall uh, where the father of the legate tends to hold court, a, a somewhat, a lord who's, let's say, has a somewhat controversial um, 
somewhat controversial and um, disputed past, uh, surrounded by town dignitaries or visiting nobles. The building's core and southern wing hold its public spaces with reception, offices, meeting rooms, and an archive. Uh, the latter is placed further south on the ground floor and down in the basement. It is open to all who want to search for information about small and large events in the region. Although, as you're approaching Steo, you do remember that they tend to request some coin um, as, uh, you know, for maintenance, you know, for the church roof. For um, no, that's that's fine. Uh, so. I think um, I think that's not a not a particular bother, given I'm still pretty cash rich after our last trip to the forest. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you walk through the doors of the Queen's Legation. It's uh, you know it's not a busy, a particularly busy place, and you walk through a couple of sort of public spaces, uh, a reception. There's some. Um, sort of, as I say, some chambers off to one side that look like maybe offices where where dignitaries and administrators work, uh, and then you reach a small set of stone steps that leads down in this rather functional but pleasant um, wooden stone building uh, that leads down to um, some archive rooms. As you reach the bottom of the stairs, there is a notary at the uh, at a desk who looks up uh, with a smile and kind of eyes ask right more with curiosity than with with any kind of hostility uh but then his eyes uh flick back to to you steo as someone who's dressed a little more richly um uh presumably in your plate armor yep and definitely. says uh, i am a notary carasto might i be of service carasto i'm steel of the town guard um i i'm looking for a door to match a key and i'll bring out the kind of intricate key Oh, oh, I see. Um, a challenge, but one I think you and yours would be good to match. Well, it is possible. Um, it is possible. Um, might I ask, at least somewhat vaguely, the circumstances? The circumstances are, alas, related to church business in this case. It is hmm. becoming a bit of a tangled web. I see. Um, well, the archives here are as, as you no doubt know, uh, open to all for a, a small recompense. Um, for a little bit more, you can even have uh, my assistance or that of my colleague to uh, help you browse the, the files and notebooks. Um, I would say, however, um, that if you're, while well, you can look up uh, individuals and events and and uh, general information about Thistlehold in the archives, um, that's information on on where one might own property or, or where one key may be used rather than another. That is slightly more sensitive information, as you can understand. Um, there are, in fact, uh, uh, there is a registry containing such information, um, and there are two copies of it. But gaining access to either of them is uh, appointments require are required to be made. Um, it is possible I could ask the, the legate herself to see if she could uh, find time for you. She is a very, very busy woman. And the other copy of the registry is, of of course, uh, held with Mayor Nightpitch. And so can I have a cunning rule to see if, if this guy seems uh, bribe? Yeah, go for it. Not yeah, bribable, yeah. but like in, in the... Sure. Uh, so I'm on minus <laughs> one here, so I need a ten or less. I get a nine. Nice. Uh, you, you don't get the sense that this is a particularly bribable gentleman, uh, and you get the impression that he is, you know, tell, telling telling the truth, um, that, you know, he can try and make an appointment with you with the Queen's Legate, um, or there's Mayor Nightpitch, but he kind of, his his demeanour seems to, to carry, you know, the sense that that's a difficult, you know, hurdle to leap. Oh. I'll I'll take a moment to have a quick chat with Asker. I'm not particularly trying to go underhand and go. Ah, oh, we probably need to go up the command chain to get someone to sign off on this. We could uh, see if he'll make us an appointment. Perhaps it's worth dropping the name of our dear friend, the Lightbringer. Maybe that will encourage him. She did suggest we come here. She did. Let's try the most direct approach thing. I will uh, return and um, mention. I, I think we will request that audience if it's all the same with you. I will shuffle around in my coin purse and bring out um, 
an appropriate recompense, which is probably less than a fowler. Um, he sort of um, nods and says, "Oh, I, 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 I work for the Queen, sir. Right? There, there is a box here to to help us sustain the archives. If you wish to donate towards that, as indeed your payment would be to go in. But I, 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 I do not take money for doing the Queen's service, sir. I, I, I am fairly recompensed by her." Certainly, good man yourself. I will drop a shilling into the into the box. Um. So, uh, so yes, uh, an appointment. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um. Can you can you tell me perhaps why and and if you tell me more about the circumstances, sir? Uh, the, the legate is a very busy woman, but um, um, yes. I understand the circumstances relate to the potential cause and research of the sinkhole event, which has recently blighted. Oh, of course, yeah. Do you, would you? Did you introduce yourself by name? I can't remember. Yeah, I, think I would. You did. I think I did. Yeah. Steer, for, formerly Sergeant Steo, yes. Yes, quite a quite some time ago. But yes. I, I heard you helped defenders at the sinkhole, sir. A great many people did. I hope I held my own. I'm getting on, as you can see. Oh well, well, yes. Uh, still, uh, brave, brave acts. Obviously, a mere notary like myself would stand no chance. But yes, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I could do about an appointment. Um, can you give me a persuasive role, please, with a plus, um, plus one? Oof. So that's actually just a seven because I'm on minus one. Mm -hmm. Twelve. <laughs> No. <laughs> he uh, he nods and says, oh, "The it is it is a long list of appointments, but um, if you uh, if you leave a uh, you can either return at a, at a later date to try and confirm this appointment that I will try to make for you, or if you specify where you are staying and uh, leave a shilling here for the the messenger, I, I can pass the legate's response to you." So there's no yeah. no guarantee of a no guarantee of an appointment. I'm afraid. Certainly, I can be reached. Um, well, our our group who are doing this research can be reached at the uh, the Witch and Familiar. Uh, we're well known there, and uh, we'll present another shilling for the messenger. Certainly, he takes that and kind of puts it aside in a, in a what looks as like a drawer he's using as a till, essentially with a little scribbled note, and he he puts that in and says, "Well, there we go. I, I will see what I can do with the legate, sir. As I say, it, it may be somewhat difficult. It, is there anything else you require from the archive, either via my services or on your own? As I say, individuals, events, uh, many things can be found in there. Perhaps you will find clues to what you seek." <sighs> I suppose we could ask about the expedition, but I have I can I can ask at the guards for that. What do you reckon ask? I mean you could probably ask at Mother Mahiras for and that Mahiras would be the well. most easy way to find out um expedition details. Unless it's been done under her radar, which seems like an expedition of hundreds certainly couldn't have been. Well, there's a couple of names it may be useful to us to look up, I think. Perhaps there's Oops. nothing but perhaps there's something. Certainly. Can we um, check for notable events relating to names? Ab absolutely, sir. Um, would you like the assistance of myself or my colleague? Yes, I think so. I, I, um, much as I am capable of turning back beasts at the top of a sinkhole, I'm sure you are far better at turning up results in a room full of questions. Uh, he nods and says, well, sir, it is uh, one thala per hour and one one extra thala per hour of our services. Um, we will just, we'll tot it up at the end. No need to pay first. Uh, and he stands up and, and kind of calls his colleague over who mans the desk. And he kind of gets a big notepad out and strides off with you and Askarai into the Queen's legation archives. Um, can we swap, swap a -roo, please, our group? Thank you. Um, okay, back at the uh, mission house. Let's say you've been stood in line for probably about half an hour at this point. It's moving very slowly um, towards the front. Um, is there anything in particular you've been like looking around for or taking note of? Certainly paying attention Talking to about any, pay, Certainly paying attention and probably discussing anyone who is loudly protesting and trying to, uh, you know, 
recognize faces and things like that listen out for any names those kinds of things yeah sure i guess i'd also like it, it feels like the kind of <laughs> this is this incredible long shot but it feels like the kind of place where as well as loud obvious protests um this is a very open environment for uh anybody with more serious intents to harm could probably move around quietly oh yeah you know it's a big crowd yeah so i'm so. gonna scan the crowd for inconspicuous people <laughs> absolutely yeah that's that old that old chestnut oh, yeah. um so yeah absolutely and, and as you're doing so you're kind of paying attention it sounds like you're not particularly talking to each other and just kind of passing the time you know awkward. eyeing up the crowd and the queue and the awkward ecclesiastical small talk yeah absolutely <laughs> um in which case you probably don't particularly notice um who has approached you um, when uh, a small, joyous voice just behind you says, look what I have done. Hello. Uh, you turn around. The boy who is sat next to Sarvola is um, standing looking at you, um, looking very happy with himself and holding up a twig towards you whose leaves still have a healthy green colour despite uh, the kind of... Uh, the slow roll into water that uh, that Thistlehold is undergoing. Can we have a picture of the boy, please, John? Okay. Where, where did you find that? No, but no. I, I said, this is what I have done. I think uh, at this point, Anton will sort of like get down on a, on a knee or lean down to be more uh, sort of eye level with the kid and give him a, a warm a warm smile and ask, can, can I see? Can I look a little bit closer? He he nods quite happily and proffers it to you. Well, I'll I'll take it and then uh, in that kind of ex more theatrical way that adults have when they're interacting with small children, make a big uh, you know expression of of joy and. and pleasure at what he's what he's achieved and oh, that's, yeah very, very impressive and and how did you do this he kind of shrugs as if he he you know is surprised at uh at managing to do whatever he has done with the, the, this twig uh, and gives gives a little laugh and says i thought you would like it well i'm very impressed uh what was your name young lad he kind of looks uh, around himself for a uh, for a second, as if sort of having to remember, and then goes, "Aluin, I'm Aluin." Hi, Aluin. My name's Anton. Very nice to meet you. And I'll offer a, a hand to to shake his hand. He holds uh, his hand out to shake and says, "Hello, Anton." And then turns uh, to Elindra and holds his hand out and says, "Hello, Elindra." Hello. I I didn't tell you my name. He shakes uh, your hand and then says, points to uh, the twig that Anton is holding and says, "You can keep that. I can always make more." He turns round and um, toddles off back towards the front where he uh, reseats himself next to Father Sarvola and starts kind of looking over at him and not mockingly, but sort of starts like emulating his movements and facial expressions as he does so. Um, but both of you may be distracted uh, away from discussing this odd turn of events. Um, can you both give me a vigilant roll, please? Um, and what can you actually give me two vigilant rolls each? One of them at plus one and one of them at, at minus three. And tell me which one you succeeded. Well, the, the first one I rolled a 20, and okay. the good, second good one stuff. I was successful and rolled a seven. Okay. How about you, Stephen? Uh, the first one I got a one. <laughs> nice. The <laughs> second one I was, uh, I was just on success, I think. It was minus three, right? So that would be, yeah, I got a seven. Yeah. Okay. 
Well then, um, I will describe what uh, what Elindra sees, and then we'll move on to what aspects of it um, Anton sees. Um, so you've said that you've been keeping an eye out, and even though you, Alwyn has, you know, slightly distracted you from this, um, as you look up um, from kind of where he's shaking your hand and the kind of Anton still there holding the twig, you see um, some distance from each other in the crowd, like on the edge of the crowd, a man and a woman uh, who definitely look more nervous than grieving or in need of comfort. Both of them are young uh, and dressed like ordinary commoners, tunic, cape, cape and trousers. Um, as you watch, as I say, they look kind of nervous and a little bit shifty, even perhaps. Um, Mike, you see the woman, but not the man. Um, and as you're watching, uh, Stephen, they kind of glance over at each other and then start kind of like looking around a little bit. Um, can you both give me another normal, I think it's a normal vigilant role, please. I make it seven. Yeah, seven. Um, the four-man patrol of the town guard has started walking away. <clears throat> okay, I will, um, I will nudge Anton <laughs> um, and say... Are they coupled to, uh, like, are the, are the man and the woman together, or are they in different parts? They're a little bit apart, but you okay. definitely saw them share a glance. Okay. So I will, I will, as subtly as I can, sort of point them out to Anton and point out that the guard is going and that uh, something seems like it might be about to happen. Yeah. Uh, Elindra, what are we doing? Are we following them? Are we moving um, closer? As you say this, you see the man and the woman both reach inside uh, their tunics and bring out red scarves, which they both hold into the air and start spinning around. Does that mean anything to us, like the red scarf for uh, Father nope. Savola? Nope. Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. Um, they both kind of there's a, a cries are heard from further back in the crowd, uh, and both the individuals you saw kind of tuck those red scarves back into their tunics and desperately like turn around and try and weave their way into the crowd. Um, you can't really see, but you can hear um, kind of people storming out of the alleys on the opposite side of the promenade. Um, as the crowd starts to kind of break up slightly in a certain amount of panic as people start shouting, you um, see that they are wearing dirty white robes with deep hoods. Uh, all of them are carrying blood red scarves wrapped around their heads so that only their eyes show. So, you know, they're across their mouths and across their hair as well. Um, <coughs> They have daubed the symbol of the sun church, the sinking sun, on their robes, and they carry flaming oil lanterns, a couple of them wheeling them around their head, in clearly winding themselves up to fling them forward, perhaps in the direction of the mission house. As they approach, they shout in hatred, heretics will burn, and death to the Dark Lord Sarvola. And I think, friends, we will end the session there. Almost precisely on time. Lovely. Uh, can we have the rest of the players on screen, please, John? Crazy. Thank you. Um, if anyone has any comments or questions, please pop them into the chat for us to address. Uh, but before we do that, I am going to do a little bit of our lovely promo. So uh, down below, you'll find a bunch of links. There's links to our Twitch and our YouTube. If you've uh, watched us on one of them, which you have, then check us out on the other, please. All of our Twitch streams end up on our YouTube as VODs, as is the custom these days. Um, we uh, There are also links to our social media, our Discord, and our Patreon. Join us on all those things if that is what tickles your fancy. We run three weekly streams. Mondays is Call of Cthulhu, Tuesdays is Blaze in the Dark, and Wednesdays is Simbroom. All of them start at 8 o'clock p.m. BST. Um, although it's worth noting that Call of Cthulhu is off next week, so we'll just have Blades in the Dark and Simbroom next week. Um, we also run um, monthly one-shots on the first Saturday of every month, the most recent of which was Dungeon World, which Pierre ran. We've had a load of others through the year. Alien and Troika, Mortborg, uh, The Expanse, uh, Fiasco, Honey Heist, 
probably other stuff as well. If I've forgotten the one one, I've probably forgotten one, and um, whoever run it will hate me forever. Um, but in any case, all the VODs for those are over on YouTube. Please do St check those out. Statistically, it was probably you who ran it, though. So we're it was probably me who ran it statistically, but you never How know. about you tell them about the next one shot, though, Matt? The next one shot, I will do that. So the next one shot, which is going ahead, is on the 2nd of October, I think. Uh, yeah, Saturday, the 2nd of October, which will start at um, 3 p.m. BST, but we'll tell you more about it as we get to the time. Um, the lovely gentleman to my right here, Chris, is going to be running that, and he's going to be Wonder Home, which is a wonderful and endearing pastoral travel um, fantasy RPG where you play um, lovely, cute animals going on a wonderful journey to find good friends and stuff. Um, it's going to be very wholesome, if I know Chris, um, and it's going to be good fun. Yeah, it's also like GM animals of farthing wood, but without all the yeah ho like horribleness. Honest. It's also okay. GMless and a very strange collaborative storytelling engine rather than a TTRPG. It's going to be great. It's, it's, it's going to be good. Cool. I'm going to play in it, god damn it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it'll be it'll Because be when stuff. I hear Matt, I think whimsy. Absolutely. <laughs> People say, I ran Troika, folks. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. We've had two uh, new followers through this as well, Jade Valor and Captain Cannon. Welcome on board, friends. Um, yeah. Have we got any comments or questions from chat, please, John? Uh, Azimuth. Hi, Steve. Um yeah, he yeah, he has prepped a sinkholeified version of the player friendly map. So that is that is excellent. We will be using nice. that going forward. Thank you, Steve. What else we got, John? Anything? He's working. Oh, that's all. Really? I see more stuff. Let's, 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 whoop, oh god, done it too. Uh, Lowen says, well played again. I see some heated religious discussions between Anton and Alindra ahead. I, I feel like that is um, almost certain, yes. Absolutely, the, almost the, certain. I think the, Steve the riot, the, riot, the riot, the riot completely passes on some of the Lindra by as they get into <laughs> they're just like, yeah, <laughs> engaging in engaging in massive debate. Uh, sorry, John, I clicked over your 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 suggested comment there. Uh, Electro Druid. That's I don't know who that could be. Uh, as someone who is newer to Simbroom, is it a common occurrence for Dark Lords to be found running soup kitchens? No, <laughs> <laughs> they're more likely to be resurrecting people soup they kitchens. killed in soup kitchens. Um, and using That's one to, way to keep the soup kitchen running, though, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it is sure. If you can't get enough volunteers, then um, absolutely. <laughs> um, Samuel, great game again, guys. Thank you very much. Loved the catacombs part, as did I. I enjoyed that, and the theological debate incoming. It's all about the theological debates here, folks. Clearly, that's where this campaign is heading. Um, I haven't read the other Throne of Thorns books yet, but I'm hoping that's entirely what they are. Um, so yeah. we, we're basically going to be doing Name of the Rose, the role-playing game. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I just... uh, yeah, I, I signed up for Holy War, so like, <laughs> yeah. don't didn't we all? Yeah, um, <laughs> like, so... some, some people criticized like the the Star some of the Star Trek and Star Trek movies as being just a load of people sat in a room discussing philosophy, and those are kind of my favorite moments of it. So I'm all in for this. Also, <laughs> sure. if you only joined us at the start of uh, Throne of Thorns and have enjoyed. Wait, um, okay. four weeks of um, of monster mashing. Um, we're actually into more um, uh, Simbarimic um, gameplay. Yeah, think, this this feel now feels more more Simbarimi than those first ones. I think that the opening of Wrath of the Warden is really impactful, and it's like holy shit, this is like an epic action disaster movie unfolding. Um, but uh, that combat can get a little bit churny uh, in the end. But now we're back out in our in our Simbarimi Simbarimi sandbox. Um, I think that's everything. Do you think? Oh no, there we go. Night bites. Uh, oh yes, welcome because you're usually on Cthulhu. I know that. Uh, thought I'd see what the Simbroom stuff is all about. Yes, expanding from watching your Cthulhu streams. It's pretty like I know. Um, obviously, Monday's uh, Cthulhu is run by Johnny, and I run uh, Blades and Simbroom. But I think we we are enough um, in sync with our style uh, of kind of more slow burn sort of um, horror tinged everything. Um, that's um, yeah, I think. Um, all our nights are equally enjoyable for everyone. Everyone. They, everyone. They, def <laughs> they definitely both share the theme oh, of you. players wondering what the hell is going on for a long <laughs> sure. number of sessions in a yeah. row. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But yes, thank you, Nightpacks, and welcome to Simbaroo. 
Um, have we got anything else, John? What are you about to I, I should actually have private chat up. There we go. Uh, so I actually know. I'm I'm asking questions of John, not even looking at the response, and John is down <laughs> below on a mini cam going. <laughs> and quite rightly, quite rightly too. God damn me. So um, yeah, thank you for watching, folks. Thank you to my wonderful players, and thank you to John for doing an excellent job stream managing. As always, we will see you next Wednesday night for more Simbaroom friends. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye.